Hello and welcome back to Underlab. Well, we've looked at the secrets of the True Laboratory many times now, but one thing I've only glanced over is the darkest, deepest secret within. The true nature behind the Amalgamates experiment was far more sinister than you may think, and it seems quite possible that Alphys has a twisted, malefic side to her. Just what exactly do I mean by that then? Well, you'll find out soon enough. This video will look at the disturbing nature of Alfie's intentions and what she really wished to achieve down there. The fact of the matter is, is that when the monsters turned into amalgamates, she may have very well been half expecting it, and I'll soon be explaining why and what this implicates. So what's the darkest secret of the true laboratory? It's time to find out. Dr. Alphys entered a role of a dark past when she became the next royal scientist. The previous monster to hold the position was a certain W.D. Gaster, who is said to have designed the core, and at one point was shattered across time and space. Apparently though he was a prodigy, and the kingdom held him in very high regard until his unfortunate and mysterious disappearance. Left behind was his former laboratory and his incredible technological feat, the machine known as the core, always spelt in all caps for some reason or another. Asgore took a long time to replace him due to his natural brilliance, but eventually Dr. Alphys came along who seemingly had ideas just as bold and innovative as her predecessor. This may have not been entirely true, however. One of her most remarkable creations is surely Metaton. But what of Metaton did she truly build? After all, if you access his old home, you find out that he's a ghost like Napster Bluke, and that he's simply possessing a body that Alfie's kindly made for him. While it's certainly a good design, it's still a far cry from anything like fully automated artificial intelligence or the core. Regardless of how competent Alfie's really was, it seems she wasn't ready to become the royal scientist. Thankfully, unlike Gaster, she wasn't shattered across space and time, but one of her biggest and most ambitious experiments resulted in something abominable and a mental breakdown for the short yellow monster. At first, we're given the impression that she tried to save the lives of fallen monsters by giving them shots of determination. Such is surely a very noble thing to do, as it seems as if they were destined to die anyhow, and Alfie's was their last hope. However, if you study the logs around the true lab, a different side of the story is presented. Alfie seems to actually express disappointment when she mentions that the bodies have yet to disappear. This is because she was desperate to extracts their souls, and their bodies are actually of little concern to her. While she had good intentions of hoping to shatter the barrier, the truth is that the idea that the monsters could be saved from the brink of death never even occurred to her, and it seems she didn't care if they could. Surely she should have been rejoicing over the fact that the bodies hasn't disappeared, and that a new avenue to her research has been opened. Instead, she says very cynically later on that at least things ended in a happy ending, with an ellipsis and a question mark. Her choice in punctuation seems to infer that she views what happened as very unremarkable, and that she doesn't really care that she accidentally ended up saving the monsters lives. All that seems to matter to her is her research, and the morals and ethics of what she did appear to be completely irrelevant. It seems like the monsters' families had no idea of the specifics of what she was going to do to their relatives, particularly seeing how Alfie's had no idea herself. The only thing we know for certain is that the bodies were disposable to her, and she cared a little for the lives of the monsters she ended up fusing together. She really seems to be the embodiment of making scientific progress, no matter the cost. Of course, she freaks out when the monsters merged together and became amalgamates, as anyone probably would, but this seems to have been more of an instinctive reaction than a realisation of the atrocity she had committed. So it seems that Alfie's may have some rather dubious ethics. Is this the only example of that though? Actually it's far from it. The very first thing Alfie's does is pit Metaton against us in a bid to falsely earn our friendship. Now true enough, there's an adorably awkward side to this where she simply doesn't know how to just talk to us and make us a friend that way. However at the same time, she happily makes Metaton out to be some terrible villain for her own sake, and we're put in many dangerous situations. Or they're all orchestrated and technically we're never in any real danger. Just think how easy it would be for something to go wrong and for Frisk to die. Once again, Alfie seems to only be looking out for herself by trying to win us over in such a haphazard fashion. You have to ask the question whether her personal happiness is really worth putting us through the ordeal we experience within Hotland. And it even ends with Metaton snapping and attacking us for real. That's proof that Metaton wasn't as up to the task as Alfie's would have us believe, and that she was likely asking too much of him. To add on to all of this, there's one of the strangest mysteries within the game. Alfie's informs us just before we enter New Home that to escape the underground we'll need to kill Asgore and to take his soul in order to pass through the barrier. However, this never happens. Flowey always destroys his soul before we have the chance to claim it. How then outside of the pacifist route was Frisk ever able to escape the underground? We couldn't have possibly used the human souls as those can only merge with monsters. The only possibility of them that Alfie's lied to us is that Frisk didn't really escape, but it seems just as possible that Alfie's perhaps unknowingly prompted us to murder Asgore. So it seems at every turn Alfie's has done something questionable or outright unethical. She was even responsible for the creation of Flowey because she injected a golden flower with determination. True enough, she never meant for half the things she did 
see it to happen. However, doesn't it seem a little careless of a scientist to rush hastily into such dangerous pseudoscience? Alfie's may just be a little crazy, as while she's good at getting results, they're really what she's actually after. She seems to have a habit of just trying whatever she hopes might work. This has resulted in Metaton turning rogue, the creation of the amalgamates and potentially the death of her king. So in other words, it's Alfie's a mad scientist. It's becoming harder and harder to defend her actions. They do seem to stem from paranoia and irrationality, particularly our interactions with Metaton. As we all know, she was too depressed about what happened within the true laboratory to tell the families of the monsters she experimented on. However, that doesn't change the facts the experiment seem terribly unethical even if it works as intended. It's also quite questionable that the possibility of saving their lives never seemed to mean much to Dr. Alfie's. She was so narrowly focused on a single goal that everything else became irrelevant. She regretted it in the end, but Alfie's former persona may have been something quite cynical. So the true lab seems to be the result of a reckless scientific pursuit. There was never any effort to save the lives of the fallen monsters. The goal was to shatter the barrier and nothing else at whatever the cost. Alfie's at the time appears to have been willing to take any risk to try any experiment for results, even if she required still living subjects to do so. Thankfully, by the end of it, she has a little more empathy, having realised her mistake, though unfortunately her personality soon shifted too far in the other direction. At the very end of the true lab, she says she may have done something cowardly without us, inferring suicide. So, Alfie's appears to be someone of emotional extremes. From complete detachment to a feeling of overwhelming guilt, it's clear that she may have one emotional issue or another. Really, we can only pity her. Still, the evidence proves that the Amalgamates has an even darker origin than we first imagined. As Alfie Alfie's never anticipated that she could save any of them, nor does she really seem to care when she did. So, the dark secret of the true laboratory is that Alfie's herself may very well have a rather twisted side to her. Her experiments have little regard as to the safety of her subjects, and she was once willing to pursue success, no matter what dark science she had to delve into. No wonder why Asgore thought her a suitable replacement for Gaster, a character who's also cryptic and mysterious in his ways. It almost seems certain that Gaster conducted a few disturbing experiments in his time as the royal scientist, and so Alfie's took the mantle of a very questionable role. It seems possible that this dark path twisted her even further and led to her doing things that she may have not even considered before. The result was the amalgamates and Alfie's subsequent reversion into an awkward, depressed introvert. So just remember, stay far far away from the true lab unless you want to become another experiment. What's an extremely spooky thought. Just perfect for Christmas, I'm sure you'll agree. Alfie's may very well just be a little deranged, or perhaps inspired by her dark predecessor, W.D. Gaster. At the very least, her ethics appear to be lacking, which may also account for her taste in anime. Thankfully, the true pacifist path clears most things up and leaves the negativity in the past. What do you think? Do you agree that it seems possible or even likely that Alfie's has a somewhat menacing side? As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't find yourself reanimated in the true lab, and I'll see you next time. Before I go, I'd just like to say a massive thank you to my patrons. My head scientists Asgore and She, Cameron Vihill, Kay Jensen, Sophronius, Mary Morkan, and Oodily Noodily. And my underlab scientists Crystal Slee, Nicholas Dux, Armin Arlet, Marisa Ray, Corey Kidwell, Yushio Koroni, Sarah Wydra, Emily Gatewood, Amfrax MLG, and Commander JNM. If you enjoyed this video, please consider checking out the Patreon link below, as well as the video that explains why I'd so massively appreciate your contribution.